Our special guest today to celebrate with us is an elegant, charming lady who has received the International Women's Day Award twice. A legend in the field of medicine who has drawn extensive media attention for her pioneering work with the series of firsts in the field of infertility. A Padam Shri, a Dhanvantri Award winner, a Bharat Nirman Award winner. Here's Dr. Indra Hinduja, a boon to the infertile couples in India. Welcome to the show, Dr. Hinduja. Thank you. Dr. Hinduja has pioneered the gift, Yamit Tantra Fallopian Transfer Technique, resulting in the birth yeah. of a gift baby in 1988, the first. She has delivered and amazed people with the news of the IVF baby at KEM in 1986. She's credited for developing oocyte egg donation program for the women who achieve premature menopause, have ovarian failure, and that baby was delivered in 1991. Of course, she has rightfully earned her place in Indian medical history. Currently, she's an active practitioner and she is working working as gynecologist, infertility and IVF specialist at PD Hinduja Hospital and Research Medical Center in Mumbai. As an IVF practitioner myself and a gynecologist, it's an absolute pleasure, ma'am, and a privilege to host this show today and know you through you. So, ma'am, uh, it's absolutely a pleasure. Today, as I was going through um, about you and learning about you, as early as uh, 1967 and 73, you finished your MBBS and MD. So in 1978, when world's first IVF baby, Louis Brown, was born in England, what was the thought that crossed your mind? Anyway, good morning, Pooja, and I would wish good morning to my all audience who are with us tomorrow morning. Um, when the baby was born, tell you very honestly, from the beginning of my medical career, I never wanted to be a gynecologist. I wanted to be a pediatrician. I wanted to know the poor child who cannot express what is happening. Now, where is the pain? why it's happening, we only can indicate you by a cry. So I wanted to be a pediatrician. For some circumstances, I did my post in pediatrics. Then we came to know that we must know from the birth of the baby. So therefore, a first allied post, I took an obstetric and gynec to see exactly what happens at the time of birth. But gradually it happened, maybe a pressure from the house, maybe something else. And there are so many other incidences that I shifted from pediatrics to obstetric and gynec. And I never wanted to be a routine gynecologist sitting in the labor room, delivering the baby, doing MTP. That was the bread and butter. I was very bored about it. I said, no, I don't want to do this. But still, I had already done post-graduation, when first time I entered as a house surgeon in gynec ward, believe me, Pooja, I was crying sitting in the corner. So the sister came and she called up my registrar. She said, Dr. Roshan, your house surgeon is in one corner and sitting and crying. So that girl was, we had the quarters on the top of that building. So she came running, hey, what happened? I said, I did PV examination. I couldn't make out anything. How am I going to do that? I don't think I will be able to do it. I don't know where my fingers is going. I don't know what I am palpating. I don't know where the head is, whether it is a head or something. I don't. So she said, don't worry. I'll teach you everything. So she used to, she trained me. Actually, bache ko kaise haath pakadke chalna sikhate hai that lady taught me how to. Then I got interested. And when the woman delivers and the liquor comes out, you know, it has a peculiar smell. And after everything is, I used to go to washroom and I used to vomit. I said, hey, I can't bear this smell. And gradually that smell became like a scent. So I took that. So as such, from the beginning, I was not so much 
when this first baby was born that really gave me a shock i said hey baby born in the created in the test tube i want to do that i want to do that but we don't know nothing no no how nothing then i started collecting newspaper cutting the literature i'll sit in the library whatever it is there was no xerox those days so i used to copy down those papers i wrote used to go and started collecting and it became it looked impossible that for me to do all that the person who has barely finished her mbbs and now doing md and i finished md but somehow it used to ring in my brain that this is just to obtain the degree but i want to do something else after md i became senior registrar so thoda or access to the library to the book to this to that and again i started doing all that and uh, when i used to go home from km i used to go by bus so the bus the final bus stop was just across km and it was just outside the building which was labeled research in reproduction i used to always stand till for the bus and i read that reproduction means creation of the baby producing the baby it is what a interesting and niche likha tha icmr you know how we are scared of any government institute so icmr hai ya government hai no nahi kuch bhi nahi hoga every day i go there i read that i used to get fascinated and then go home by the bus one day i gathered all my courage and decided let me go their timing used to be from 9 to 5 my time was from 8 to 4 so 4 1 hour i had so one day i went inside watchman let me go because i had to fill the slip and i knew that the there is one doctor who is doing the same experiment in the animals and they had a very good animal house they still have it in the same although the name of that institute has changed national institute of research and reproduction and health now and and wo abhi alag ho gaya to main second floor pe gayi and then i realized ki this is the lab and i entered inside i spoke to the doctor peter was his name i said look i'm dr induja from that that hospital i've just come to say hello to you and i was fascinated to know that you are doing some work in animals so he was very polite he was very nice we started talking so it was oh he started looking at the watch i said where do you want to go home he said yeah i live at andheri so far i had i said why can't we have a cup of tea outside <laughs> km there used to be one irani hotel he used to give us tea in the there. chipped uh, yeah still chipped. there yeah it is there to the chipped cup the irani oh, chai aadha cup of chai <laughs> and then they used to give us pav wala so we used to go there so he is agreed and that is where i discussed with so, him uh, what do you do post your md of course so, uh, you... that is really gave me attraction <laughs> ki something one can do with him so post your md of course ma'am you have uh, worked doubly hard and both as a full time faculty with uh, mm. st gs medical college and kem that is king edward memorial hospital yet at the same time you worked on the cutting edge topic of human reproduction in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer and you did your phd at bombay university and of course you just shared that you used to stand at the bus stop at parel and look at the irr and then one day you gathered courage and you entered the institution of course if there's anybody to learn time management and juggling of time that's you and of course mm-hmm. now i know exactly what your secret was about effectively managing time but let me share with the audience that 1978 was the birth of the first ivf baby in england 8 years later on august 6 1986 baby harsha chevra was born a beautiful baby girl was born this baby was conce- conceived through dr indra hinduja's pioneering treatment of ivf and she was also delivered by dr indira 
This, of course, was a turning point in the history of medicine, and it was documented extensively mm -hmm. in the media. What would be the account of the day when at 4.10 p.m. by a cesarean section, you delivered this IVF baby, Harsha? Well, during the pregnancy of uh, Mani Chowda, means her mother, every day used to be very, very stressful. Practically every day I used to get a call from newspaper. Cassie, a patient, how is she doing? How is the baby growing? I mean, tell you every alternate day, every newspaper will call. I used to say, no, she's doing well. She's... And that used to give me more tension. So many people are interested and so many things are there. Every day, suppose she doesn't come for antenatal checkup again, I will wait for her. Late I say I used to, there used to be no phone. And she used to live in this slum area. And outside the slum, there was a panwala. Uske saath humne thoda sa tie up kiya tha. To main o panwala ko phone karti thi. I said, eh, Mrs. Chowda nikli kya? Ja ke pooch ke aon na. <laughs> to he will say, no, abhi rush hai, mere paas, I can't go. I said, please go. So he will say, hey, boy, go and find out what money is doing. So he used to tell to the boy working with, ah, she has left. She's do this. This is how I used to follow her. And I knew that she has left. So when she'll come, we will the train was not there. This was not there. So I got late. Somebody was, okay, I had to prepare tea for them. And all sorts of, you know, so domestic So Mani has problems. mentioned in one of her interview that... Uh, uh, of course, she was the 17th couple that you worked on and that this was the first pregnancy. 18. After 18, 17, the 18th. 18th. I was born on 18th. <laughs> so it was my 18th. So I always consider 18 is my lucky day. <laughs> so she mentioned in her interview that she once forgot to take an injection or shot. One day she was pregnant and she went running in a sports competition and uh, she was, uh, you know, asked, why did you do that? And uh, you know, she just mentioned all those odd things that happened, which were which mattered so much because everything oh was so God. intriguing at that time. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, she made. I, she used to every day give me a stress every day. What did you feel on, even, uh, on that day when you held baby Varsha, uh, Harsha in your arms? Uh that day, as if it has happened yesterday. I'll tell you. If you go to see KM Hospital, there is obstetric theater, which is on the ground floor. And so high ceilings, it is, they can never do air conditioning because it is very high ceiling. And on the top of the window, there are some, uh, you know, ventilators, what we call jharoka type. So all those ventilators were there. And when I entered, I had sent her for NST to Wadia. Wadia said, I got a phone that her NST is not good. So that was at 2.33 and informed the dean that this is what she requires his area. So there, dean told me, you want any help? You want to call Dr. Purandare? You want to? I said, no, I don't want to call anybody. I want to call my friend Kusum Zaveri, who is in JJ. So he said, okay, we'll wait. So around quarter to four and I took in the theater. How the news spread all over the city, I really don't know. And Puja won't believe that there were two ventilators. From there, I could only see the cameras. Only They were climbing on what, how they were coming up that high, who gave them the staircase, whether they were on the stool, whether they were on each other's shoulder. I really didn't know that. Only those cameras Amazing. you could see. And I'm here doing cesarean. So I went, I did cesarean. Everything went very smooth. And the baby was delivered. For two minutes that I think some camera has captured that. I held the baby and I closed my eyes. I didn't even look. The vessels are caught. My uh, Dr. Zaveri was doing that. And I held and I thanked my you know, almighty. I say, God, it's you. <laughs> so touching. So touching to hear this, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It me was share you. With... And then she opened the eyes for a second and she gave me the first cry. 
Oh God, I felt it was a miracle. It was a miracle. And it is only, only, only because of his, uh, you know, the upper grace of and yeah. upon, yeah. The Almighty. You I were mean, only it was 37 really years very of good. age then, ma'am. You were only 37 years of age then when you delivered yeah. Harsha. But 31 yeah. years later, you delivered the baby of Harsha. Harsha now became a mother. And she kept in touch with you all those 30 years. How did you feel? What was going on in your mind when you held Harsha's baby in your arms and when you had held Harsha in your arms? Well, I tell you, there is no difference. I mean, uh, I later, of course, realized that I may be the only one in the world Absolutely. who has delivered IVF baby and delivered her two baby children. Two children. So, uh, it is a different feeling. Probably when I did that, I had only one thing in my mind. Ki when Harsha was born, Everybody had a doubt whether this Arsha will be normal, will she have a baby, will she have a normal uh, female activities, whether she can conceive. Still the end. But when she delivered, so first thing came to my mind, ki anyway, world will know that IVF babies are absolutely normal like other conceived children. And that Although we say that to the patient, ki there is no difference. You see two children, one IVF, one normal conception, you won't realize. And I used to always say, probably IVF babies are more intelligent than this. So they used to <laughs> ask me the reason. I said, look, I have no reason. I can only say that the embryo which can stand the insult of an environment created by the human being not by the God, must be the strong embryos. I mean, so this, this is, so is incredible. So incredible. This is what I used to explain them. And I used to say, that is one thing. Because we don't play God. We don't provide the same environment. God creates you. He has given you so many things in your within body where the embryos grows. And we cannot mimic God. So probably that embryo is stronger, so they are better. And more than that, the care given to the mother and the baby during antenatal, during the growth of the pregnancy or during the delivery is little exclusive. True. Maybe that is another reason. And it becomes like a pressure woman. She herself is different, feels different. So maybe that is the reason. Harsha calls you her godmother. Yeah. And I think... You know, she was named for... Indira before. Sorry? For a very long time, she was named Indira. Oh, is it? Yeah. When her school admission came, then we gave her the name which is written in her uh, horoscope. So, Harshita, of course, calls you uh, her godmother. And I just believe that life truly comes a full circle. Uh, so, ma'am, when... Uh, you walked up the dais to receive your Padma Shri in 2011 from the President of India. How did you feel? What was your feeling then? You know, Pooja, every award you get, it increases your responsibility. Your, uh, yeah, so we who feel that uh, I must prove myself worth this, worth whether I'm worthy. So in that is the encouragement you get to work harder, to do this, that nobody should feel, so it, it, you feel more energetic, more uh, feel like doing something more in that. But when I went to receive that and President of India is putting a batch on you, so that was the moment. And then uh, they gave me the uh, citation and uh, I was just talking to her. Then eventually, Madam told, turn on this side. They are taking the picture. So <laughs> I turned to it, the picture. You know, I can actually perceive a sense of pride just uh, speaking to you. So, of course, uh, the country feels pride when they address you, when they invite you, when they celebrate you, when they award you. 
and mm. uh, uh, you know um, let me share with the audience that uh, dr indira hinduja is a rare doctor in the sense that with a series of us as she said that probably she is the first doctor to have delivered the baby of an ivf baby uh, and uh, she is of course a double doctor as in she is an mbbs as well as a phd and she has of course shared the story about how she did the research but i must bring to the knowledge of people that 114 publications in reproductive biology have been done by her which field of research attracts you today i really feel that no i mean I, before that i want to add to it uh first big award which i got was dhanvantari i was at that time i feel i was the only first lady to get dhanvantari uh dhanvantari award was in taj crystal room by government of maharashtra governor as well as the chief minister both were there and uh, i had was told i was asked how many cards you need so i said give me 10 my family members would come and after that there would be a high tea i was just taking a round and i got a call from dr b k goel's office saying that uh, we are nominating you for this award so we want your bio data so i was surprised i said why me to so anyway i sent bio data to them and 15 days later i got a call saying that you have been selected and this is the bio data we have written the citation so this second call came when i was talking to my patient in the consulting room i had puja not invited a single person among other associates only my 7 to 8 family members the crystal room was jam packed and the country was invited the country walked and, in uh, and then still case if you see the you had to go around the balcony type thing and then the people were standing at the circus and they had put the screen even at the entrance of crystal room and when my name was announced to give the award so governor stood up but without saying anything entire hall thousands of the people have given me standing ovation and have that picture and after that when i say ki i always say that that every time people say that any successful man there is a woman behind him but i said i had three women behind me is it one is my mother who supported me every moment of my research second was kusum javeri and third was harsha so because of three women i am what i am today so i had luckily called harsha also there for that function imagine governor of maharashtra stands up and call where harsha is please bring her on the dais <laughs> oh she was just 10 15 years old she was called there and the bouquet which was given to him to receive him he gave it to harsha he placed her he made her stand next to her and he took a picture that when was, was a moment like, of my think. pride i'm telling you it was a uh, day of my pride and that was my first award which i got it following all this but uh, i mean you feel that people have really appreciated your work you mentioned in one of your interviews that your mother is your icon on international oh. women's day today what gratitude would you like to pay to her i only say that mama you are the one who gave me a birth gave me what i am and you were part of me and you are still part you all she was an educated lady absolutely uneducated but what discipline she roped in me what you know it is amazing amazing 
she hardly knew anything there's one incident when i used to go for the emergency you know from km from car so cesarean hoga ya kuch bhi to i had to go by taxi so she used to come down with me make me sit she had a small little diary with broken chit piece of pencil she'll write down the na- number of the taxi and uh, because whether i reach safely there or no she didn't know which language she used to write in gurmukhi you know granth sa you know wo ek hi language mein usko thoda likhne ko aata tha wo diary thi mere paas bahut dino tak har taxi ka number likh deti thi aur tabhi bole ki chance mile to mujhe phone karna you are multilingual aren't you ma'am uh, you studied yeah, in a marathi but i don't school. know gurmukhi <laughs> yeah you studied in a marathi school then you learned yeah. english you are a sindhi um and now you're talking about of course gurmukhi your mother used to write so which is the uh, your passion uh, as a language mere khayal se the language is is my passion i won't <laughs> say this is good this is bad all our, our languages i feel i like every language every language has its own uh, you know sweetness so you cannot mix it like that you have this lucky sari a lucky sari i have i have it is in the cupboard and what's the story behind it if you want during my early education like in the school and all that there was no much of a encouragement i'll tell you the reason is that uh we came from pakistan as a refugee initially hand to mouth gradually we were trying to settle in different country where we were yet not accepted all that was told to me by my parents and they used to call us in marathi nirwasi that means we have no place no country no city and gradually we make a dent into it and we developed and we you feel that now we are part of india so every pressure was on this ki let my elder two sister get married let their burden go you know they feel like that so till they get married mere ko everybody was allowing me to study after that when they realized i am really good in my studies then encouragement started and when i became a doctor that time my father proudly told to the place where you so my daughter is a doctor and we went to handloom house oh. so we realized ki handloom house khadi sarees and all so he went to the counter there look my daughter has become a doctor it's still there khadi so, house of course, still there i have that saree yeah i have that i wish i had taken it out i can just it is in my behind cupboard we'll do that later. i want to choose the saree for my daughter tasar silk ki saree mujhe unhone di hai i still have that and i would i used to wear whenever a good occasion is there whenever there is any uh, meeting any lecture that's my lucky saree you know they used to call me for the lecture that was new for me to go and give the lecture to the audience and all that like uh, lions club rotary club koi hospital koi this so mostly i used to wear that sari i had actually thought had you would be dressed it. in an elegant sari today i mean i wish i had known I that had. <laughs> yeah 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 i'll tell you i've taken that out three sarees <laughs> then i had no time to drape it so i changed into this so let's walk down your memory lane and to what i am aware that you were just a few months old when like many others your family also underwent the trauma of partition and mm. you migrated from sindh now pakistan in a boat from karachi onwards to mumbai yes. and then you changed cities from mumbai to pune and then you went to belgavi which is now known as belgaum where you finally settled and you did your schooling in a um, in a municipal school and yeah. uh, that was a marathi uh, medium school and then you shifted over to an english medium school so there were minimal facilities at that time and of course Absolutely. you belong to an era 
where girls were discouraged from attending schools and uh, you were extremely protected extremely accounted for so um, what were the challenges that you faced particularly in your early schooling in those days um actually it was in the beginning it was quite routine you go in the morning come back in the evening that i was interested in drawing so i requested that there is a free class going on our drawing teacher takes from 5 to 5:30 can i attend so permission was granted so one day this is an again the, uh, my incident which i will never forget i went to the school class teacher was busy so i i had to come back and one of my neighbor's daughter was also doing the class she was higher standard she was in the second higher grade and i came back but what happened when you come to the school our compound did not have a big playground like you know like a backyard or garden or not so on the way when i used to come from the road no there used to be one building they had a big playground and around evening time the girls used to play their kho kho langdi and all that so i joined them and i forgot that it is 6 o'clock my people must be waiting so i came and everybody i say hey kyun der lagai i say no aaj thoda class der tak chala to they say are minakshi to kab ki aa chuki hai she said classes <laughs> so i was a red handed cat to <laughs> there my mother taught me a lesson dekho indira indra jhoot bolegi na wo jo wall lizard hoti hai na uske jaisi tere ko poonch aa jayegi <laughs> i was mortally scared every time i'll go in the mirror and turn back pooch aa gayi ke pooch aa gayi and that my mother noticed ki i'm so scared so scared to so one day i said ji you told me pooch aa jayegi but i don't have a tail at the back so he said you know that when my child makes a mistake and if i have to bring out from the cell i have to do fast so for you i did a fast and requested god not to punish so sweet so, so sweet. that was the lesson she gave me never bluff don't tell lies so to many ka mummy next time when i tell you that today i am fasting that means i have done something do you say no you can't do that i would be have to do it so as this child, was the first lesson my mother gave me so as a child i'm told that you really enjoyed sports you won prizes oh, but yeah, even yeah. Uh, even uh, beyond that uh, you were passionate about music and you had music as a subject in school and then when you had to choose between studies medical studies and music medicine took supersedence so do you still sing ma'am uh puja i love music i feel it i i feel that music is the connection between your soul and the god true it's like a bridge it's like a rope which connects you i love it i love it unfortunately i couldn't pursue it jabhi jabhi chance milta hai main fir se join karti hu fir se nahi hota hai fir se chhod deti hu to tell you very honestly my teachers also don't get bored with me <laughs> they say chal tere ko jab time milega i'll come actually i did took uh, exams in sitar arun sangeeta lay karte nikhil ghosh you must have heard of yes. bansuri vadar his brother he used to run classes in car so i joined sitar class i joined i gave one exam but after that i because we left car we left somewhere else so then i had to do residency i had to go to the be remain in the hospital so o chhut gaya so which is Or your phase, true blue music if you feeling low instrumental you... instrumental sitar is my favorite and you and hum? i do can you i'm not going to sing <laughs> <laughs> anyhow um, what about your uh, prizes in sports 
एक बार है ना आई वॉज गुड इन द स्पोर्ट्स वाइल्ड रनिंग आई वॉज यूज टू प्ले हॉकी आई फेल डाउन एंड द हॉकी हॉकी हिट मी द माई फेस सो माई फ्रंट टूथ इज हाफ नाउ ऑफकोर्स आई हैव रिप्लेस्ड सो उसके बाद लड़की को कोई दोष आएगा तो शादी नहीं होगी <laughs> तो मेरा स्पोर्ट्स बंद कर दिया फिर I was quite good in education competition. I was good in dramas. I was good in mimicries, but uh, all that I had to do it only in the school afterwards. To Abhi me kuchne. personally, I'm also very passionate about music, and I say to those in professions, and to those in passions, and to those in both. And uh, um, you know, music is medicine to my mind, to my soul as well. Absolutely, so I agree I'm, with you. and uh, as i was uh, going through some bits and pieces of your journey i read somewhere that somewhere uh, in your early childhood you desired to be a nurse and then with better grades you chose that yes i would now aspire to be a doctor so what was that inspiration that incident which made you turn around and uh, take medicine as a field during the sports i had uh, big too many injuries so i had uh, broken my thigh bone femur so i was taken to the hospital which was public hospital of course so I, my plaster was not done on the same day it was on the next day so i was lying there and that nurse with that square cap you know starched square cap the red belt and the straight dress white shoes and vice why oh, like that uniform very much as it as i hona hai mujhe as i hona hai i want to be nurse what a uniform yaar what a thing it is after 3 months when i went to remove my plaster i saw a one doctor with three four junior doctors walking in and then he's leading them and teaching them and telling them about my leg and explaining that and they she does some exercises physiotherapy and that sight a big doctor with three four juniors and discussing and talking and teaching on me i said no ye coat pen ke jo baitha hai na i'll be pristine like that. white dress and that to watch that was carved in my mind okay i want to be a doctor i so, want to um, be a doctor we are now um, short on time and uh, i'll ask you some other questions as you said that uh, you know a pristine white dress starched ironed elegant uh, a person who is who has all the answers to your ill health all the solutions to your problems is what inspired dr indira but uh, i just uh, asked you a question that you have 114 publications in reproductive biology what is the field of research that uh, interests you today now of course my main interest is the find out the cause that if we insert the same quality good embryos in a very good uterus lining which we tell the patient that you have uh, the best results and they all don't become pregnant why this why question marks really disturbs you if we put set 100 embry- do embryo transfer all 100 should so the people ask me the question my a patient asked, वो दो दिन का बच्चा अंदर डाला ना तो उसको क्यों निकाला मैंने कहा बेटा हमने नहीं निकाला आपके यूट्रस ने उसको पकड़ा नहीं तो क्यों नहीं पकड़ा आई हैव नो आंसर सो माय मोस्टली रिसर्च इज टू फाइंड द कॉज ऑफ फेलियर समवेयर अलोंग द लाइन यू वर आल्सो डूइंग सम रिसर्च ऑन थेरेपूटिक क्लोनिंग एंड ऑन स्टेम सेल लाइंस काइंड वन काइंड टू आई हैव अ two lines of embryonic stem cell of course embryonic stem cell is now banned they don't want to do it so therefore came ips that induced pluripotent stem cell that from the skin to create pluripotent then i had a project with barc they gave me a lot of money and i have the lining of ips ips as well it is stored there 
So this IPS can be reactivated to any tissue to treat. So here you don't require any embryos. It is your own tissue is being generated into IPS. And IPS is getting differentiated in the organ, whichever is defective or whichever is diseased or whichever is injured. So ultimate treatment will be that. True. So therefore, it interested me. Ki instead of that, so many cancer patients are there. So many diabetes are there. So many liver problems are there. Why can't their own tissue be regenerated and repair the organ, which is diseased, where you don't require HLA type? True. You don't require ma matching. You don't require embryos. You don't request anybody to give you the organ. I'll interrupt you, ma'am. So, uh, quick questions, short answers. What is your opinion about the ethics in today's new techniques of infertility? See, the science is continuously going to progress. And newer and newer techniques are going to come. Now you must have heard of CRISPR. CRISPR is the one which edits the gene, replace the damaged gene, and you can have a designer baby. So you, you choose your what characteristic you want the baby, and this technique will do it. So ideally, CRISPR was introduced to treat the cancer. That means the cancer gene you remove and replace it by the healthy. But there are some people, scientists, who can use this. You cannot stop the progress. But you have to decide that what we wanted. Are we going to indulge into all this? To have that. To prevent the misuse of the advances in the science. We need law. We know that. Share uh, with the audience. We Let me share. So with we the, need that. Sorry to interrupt you. Let me share with the audience that uh, uh, Dr. Indira Hinduja, post her stint with medical colleges as a faculty, went on to establish her own practice, and uh, she established Incus uh, as an IVF center as well as a research center, and uh, this was uh, along with her. Um, long, uh, long friendship with uh, Dr. Kusum Zaviri. Yes. Ma'am, uh, your long association with Dr. Kusum Zaviri, whom we lost lately, must have created a void in your life. Yeah. How do you fill in the loss? I don't think this gap will ever be filled. It is the lifelong gap. I'll tell you, Kusum was the responsible person for me to choose Gynac. Kusum was responsible to teach me Gynac and I passed with the good marks. And Kusum was responsible to progress in IVF. When I wanted to present my paper in Boston, I had no money. How can I go to Boston, the person who is traveling by the bus every day? choose and settle and present and register and all. So I just showed the paper to Kusum and told you that this is the patient I want to present there. So she said, no, we'll find out donation from somebody. I said, he can donation mila to jaungi. So one evening she calls me up. Hey, I got a donation. Book your ticket. Tell me how much it is. So how much I do tell him. I went, I presented, I came back. And then I realized it was she who paid for all that. Amazing, amazing. And Tell you know, these scientists struggle so much to get a sponsorship for our research, sure. for our travel, yeah. for yeah. our publications. We struggle with DST, hmm. with CSIR, with UGC Grants Commission. I mean, only people who have gone through the hardships really understand. And I, I, I would like to tell uh, the audience that I have had the fortune of, mis of uh, meeting Dr. Indira Hinduja and she went and introduced me to Kusum, uh, Dr. Kusum Zaveri. And then we had this lovely conversation, a cup of tea, and then she showed me around her entire premise and the lab and you know these are incredible moments and as mm -hmm. you said um, you did um, 
once mentioned that uh, you had some money on you and the patient who came to you did not have the money in the middle of the cycle yeah. and that you actually gave that money to that yeah. uh, patient to buy the medicines and then you didn't have a single coin on you for you to even get on to the bus and then you walked back all the way from parel for kilometers in that heat back home yeah. i mean yeah. such it's are true. such are people like you such are people who have philanthropy inside of them and that's an inspiration that's absolutely an inspiration uh from what i, I know of you. you from what i know of you are you a three sisters and you chose not to marry and somewhere along the line you said in an interview that daughters don't have to be dependent and they can be achievers would you like yeah. to add something to this i always say that woman is stronger than the man physical not physically biologically which is true she is the only one who can run both fronts career as well as um, life private life i don't think ever any man can run that you exchange the role with man one day i'll also go to office you also go you come home prepare cup of tea for me look after the children come back prepare and cook next day he will uh, tell you ki what is all this corona taught Nobody. a lot to the men koi bhi nahi koi bhi nahi kar payega it is the woman who can meet both private life as well as the work but they really don't realize ki you have more capacity more capability more intelligent more efficiency to manage both fronts you can do it only thing what you require is you have to earn the cooperation from the family as well as the work carry them with you take them with you that you are together explain them that i would do it and definitely the home front as well as at your people work will definitely cooperate with you and you will be able to achieve and don't ever fold your hands and sit nahi hota hai sit back god shows you the way there is always a solution there is always the problem so problem you... and solution go hand to hand in hand but we don't we don't realize we don't ignore i must have had ample difficulties during all this i also managed two things government ira as well as public hospital ke but i never felt even at one ki hey this chap is creating hindrance this chap is creating you overcome that you will definitely overcome it i am confident if you have a confidence in you if you are sure that you want to do it there is always a way i quote you to you and you have said very often in many of your interviews that you have converted a challenge into an opportunity yes so do you think you have achieved what you really wanted to in life well there is no end to anything na no? we are बेसिकली ग्रीडी पीपल एक बार आई वी एफ सक्सेस हो गया ऐसा थोड़ी है कि बस आई विल जस्ट सिट बैक एंड जस्ट प्रोड्यूस द बेबीज ओनली नो यू वॉन्ट टू प्रोग्रेस यू वॉन्ट टू डू बियॉन्ड दैट यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट की वाई इट इज है वट एल्स कैन बी डन आई टेल यू आई वी एफ इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट टेक्निक विच एथिकली एंड लॉफुली यू गेट ह्यूमन मटीरियल फॉर द रिसर्च which woman will give you a egg for the research which person will give you embryo for the research you will create embryo for the research no ethically lawfully it has been given to you make use of it probably you might get answer to every disease every problem this is what i feel what is that one wish one desire you think is unfulfilled ऐसा तो कुछ है नहीं जब गॉड टेक्स मी टूडे आई एल बी हैप्पी 
I am so glad to meet somebody who is content. I am so glad. I mean, it's it is uh, so rare to find people who are content in life. And content, contentment yes. is a virtue today. It's a virtue yes. today. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, fifteen thousand babies that you have helped give birth to, to parents who were childless. How would you really sum up your journey of life? It was very enjoyable. It was playful. It was hard. It was with the hurdles, but eventually gave me the. I feel that I am the favorite child of God. He has given me everything in the life. Everything in the life. What else I can ask? Day before yesterday, I. We in three days I did four IVF. Yeah, puja all four up. Oh, wonderful! So I said, not that I did anything, not that because I have a jadu in my hand. No, it is all him. He helped me. So what else you want? Gifted, blessed. I said life couldn't be better than this. I am so glad to hear this. I am absolutely so glad to hear this because there's always this wish list of people, and um, you know, to progress, to aspire is different, but to be content at every step in life is an absolutely different thing. Uh, with this, I would like to come. To There is one wish which I want to tell. Yeah, I, I want, want to die on work on the working chair. I mean, I salute to that. I salute to that. I don't want to die valid and invalid and all that. Time. I want to die on my working chair. That's that's absolutely justified. That's my last absolutely wish. justified. Yes, and the God and the Almighty is there. No, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, so, um, with this, I would like to draw a close to our session, um, Doctor Hinduja. You have been a true achiever. An incredible woman, and I'm so pleased to meet you today. A talented woman as well. You have been the recipient of the First Lady's Award as well at the Rashtrapati yeah. Bhavan by the Ministry of Child and Welfare. You truly deserve today to be where you are, and we are honored to be able to interact with you at length. How the time clock passed by, and how the moments ran away. Um, This uh, session today will truly be etched in my mind for the years to go. As an IVF practitioner, I cannot be more blessed but to interact personally and professionally with you, the icon in this field. With this, I shall take your leave. Catch you all in the next episode of Legends of Medicine. Stay safe, take care, and be good. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I thank all the audience by spending so much time in the morning of Sunday. All thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye.